All right, so you're headed to Ireland, huh? Sounds exciting. You bet it is. And you were smart enough to send us this Love Ireland newsletter, which I gotta say is packed with tips. It does seem to cover a lot of ground. Absolutely. But when we talked, you mentioned that it's a little light on the details about Irish accents. Yeah, that's definitely something I'm really curious about. Well, you came to the right place because luckily we've got an expert here to help us go beyond those generic travel tips. I'm ready to dive deep. Perfect. So today we're talking about Irish accents. Sounds good. Because let's be honest, it's not just one Irish accent, right? Nope, not at all. In fact, even saying Irish accents is kind of oversimplifying things. Okay. How so? Well, there's actually a whole range of accents across the island, each with its own unique story. So it's more like thinking about how different an American accent can sound depending on if someone's from Boston or, say, New Orleans. Exactly. Gotcha. I'm starting to get the picture here. It's like if I had a map of Ireland, instead of just seeing cities and counties, I'm hearing all these different pockets of sound. You got it. So where should we even start with all this? Okay, well, a good place to begin is with the history of language itself in Ireland. Okay. See, so centuries, Irish Gaelic was the main language spoken there. Mm -hmm. But then English came along, and these two languages started to, well, kind of intertwine and influence each other. Ah, so are you saying that those historical layers are still there in how people speak today, even if they're speaking English? Precisely, those echoes are most noticeable in certain regions. Give me an example. Well, let's imagine we're in Dublin. Yeah. The Dublin accent is probably what most people picture when they think Irish accent. Oh, yeah. I can kind of hear it in my head. It's that lively, almost musical quality. Makes sense. Huh. Now, I've heard people talk about how Dubliners have a unique way of pronouncing their vowels. That's right. And that's part of this historical mix. Really? Yeah. One of the things you'll hear is the Dublin A sound. Oh, okay. It's longer and more open than in other accents, and it's thought to be partly a holdover from how vowels were pronounced in Irish Gaelic. Wow, so it's like a little piece of the past still alive in how people speak today. Exactly. Can you give me an example of a word where I'd hear that? Sure, think about the word bath. Yeah, bath. Yeah, when a Dubliner says it, it almost sounds like they're stretching out the A. Bath. Yeah, like that, making it more prominent. So interesting. And that same sound pops up in other words too, right? You bet you'll hear it in words like chance or dance. Chance dance. It's amazing how much history can be packed into a single vowel sound. It really is. Okay, so we've got Dublin on the East Coast. Where else should we travel on our sound map of Ireland? Mm. Let's head over to the southern coast and visit Cork. Cork, okay. The Cork accent is another big one known for its sing-song rhythm and some pretty unique ways of saying things. I'm all ears. What makes it stand out? Well, one of the most famous things about the Cork accent is the use of oi, where other accents might use just I. Give me an example. Easy. The word girl becomes goral in a Cork accent. Goral. That's great. It really is. And it's these little differences that make exploring accents so much fun. Totally. Okay. So we've got Dublin on the East Coast, Cork down south. And I'm picturing this sonic tapestry spreading across all of Ireland. I like that. But we've only talked about vowel sounds so far. Are there other key ingredients that give these accents their unique flavor? For sure. Vowels are just, the stark consonants are important too, and they can change a lot from region to region. Okay, like what? Well, one example you'll hear in various parts of Ireland is the softening of T sounds, especially at the end of words. Mm. Okay, softening T sounds, give me a concrete example. Think of the word butter. Butter. Now, in many Irish accents, particularly those with a strong influence from Irish Gaelic, the T at the end softens almost like a D. So it sounds more like butter. Exactly. Maud. Yeah, it's definitely different. Right, and this softening is actually part of a bigger linguistic process called lenition. Lenition? That's a new one. It basically means that certain consonants, like T in this case, become weaker depending on where they are in a word. Interesting. So this isn't just an Irish thing. Nope, not at all. It's found in tons of languages all over the world. Yeah. But in Irish accents, it's one of those subtle things that you start to hear everywhere once you know about it. Mind blown. Okay, so we've got vowel shifts, consonant softening. What else should I be listening for? Well, there's also the music of the language, the intonation and rhythm. This is where that stereotype of the lilting Irish accent comes from. Oh, yeah, that almost sing-song way of speaking. But, of course, it's not as simple as saying all Irish accents are lilting. 
Right, I figured it couldn't be that straightforward. The way the pitch goes up and down can really vary depending on the region. Gotcha. So some regions might have a more obvious, almost melodic lilt, while others are more understated. You got it. It's all about the nuances. Fascinating. Okay, so we've got vowels, consonants, and even the musicality of the language. And I'm starting to feel like I'm developing an ear for these different sounds. But are there any specific accents beyond Dublin and Cork that really highlight this diversity? Absolutely loads. For example, let's take a trip to the West Coast, to the beautiful region of Galway. Galway. Okay. Bring on those West Coast sounds. The Galway accent is often described as softer and more melodic than some of the other accents we've been talking about. Softer and more melodic. I like it. It's got a very lyrical quality that lots of people find charming. So if Dublin is like a lively jig and Cork is a spirited reel, then Galway is more like a gentle ballad. I like that analogy a lot. Mm. And what's interesting about the Galway accent is that it's one of the places where you can really hear the influence of Irish Gaelic. Oh, wow. So it's like a direct link to Ireland's linguistic past. Exactly. You might even hear some differences in sentence structure or word order that come from Irish Gaelic. And certain vowel sounds, especially ones that are unique to Irish Gaelic, are more likely to be preserved in the Galway accent. Wow, it's amazing how each region has its own microculture of sound. It is, isn't it? Totally. It's all shaped by geography history and this mixing of languages over time. You've got it. And to really grasp just how diverse things are, we need to head to one more important region, Northern Ireland. Okay, across the border. Because just over there, you'll encounter a whole new world of accents. All right, Northern Ireland, I'm ready. What makes the accents there different from what we've heard so far in Dublin, Cork, and Galway? Well, as we've seen, Irish accents are a mix of influences. But in Northern Ireland, there's one that really stands out, Scots-English. Scots-English as in from Scotland. Yep. Centuries of interaction and migration between Northern Ireland and Scotland have left a clear mark on how people speak. So Northern Irish accents are kind of like a bridge between Irish and Scottish speech patterns. Exactly. And that means you'll hear some fascinating differences. For example, the vowel sounds often have a different quality, and there might be more emphasis on certain syllables. Fascinating, because like each accent is adding its own verse to a complex and beautiful song. It is a bit like that. I'm imagining a choir with Dublin, Cork, Galway, and Northern Ireland all singing in harmony, but each with its own voice. That's a beautiful way to put it. And to make our sonic choir even richer, we need to add something we talked about earlier, slang. Oh yeah, slang. Let's do it. Give me all the colorful local phrases. I want to be able to order my Guinness like a pro. All right. I can help with that. Let's start with a word you'll hear all over Ireland, but especially in those lively pub conversations. Crockick. Crack. How do you even pronounce that? It looks a little intimidating. Don't worry. It's pronounced to rhyme with crack, and it basically means fun, enjoyment, or good times. So if someone asks, what's the crack? They're basically saying, what's going on? Or are you having fun? That's it. And if you're really having a blast, you could say, the crack is mighty. The crack is mighty. Okay, that one's going straight into my vocabulary. I love it. <laughs> it's like a linguistic cheer for good vibes. Mm -hmm. What other gems do you have? Here's another one you'll hear a lot. Grand. This one is super versatile. It can mean, okay, fine, great, or even very good, all depending on how it's used. So if someone asks how you're doing, you could just say grand and you'd be covered. You got it. And if you want to emphasize how great you're feeling, you can say, I'm grand altogether. Grand altogether. Another winner. Okay, I'm definitely adding that to my list. Yeah. It's like a linguistic Swiss army knife, one word with a whole range of meanings. Exactly. And it's that versatility and playfulness that makes Irish slang so delightful. This is making me so excited to experience Ireland for myself. I want to hear all these accents try out my new slang skills and really immerse myself in the language. That's the spirit. Speaking of which, you mentioned that sometimes people worry about understanding Irish accents. Do you have any tips for listeners who might be feeling a little apprehensive about that? It's totally understandable to be a bit nervous, especially if you're not used to hearing different accents. But honestly, I think the fear is often overblown. So no need to pack a translator or anything? No, nope, not at all. Yeah. The most important thing is to just go in with an open mind and be willing to listen. Remember, communication is a two-way street, so don't be shy about asking people to repeat themselves if you didn't quite catch something. Good advice. And above all, embrace those moments of potential misunderstanding with a sense of humor. Those are the moments that make the best travel stories, right? Absolutely. And you'll find that most Irish people are happy to help you navigate the nuances of their language. 
They might even enjoy sharing some local slang with you. That's so reassuring. It's like the language becomes a bridge connecting you with the people and the culture. That's a great way to put it. I think we've painted a pretty good picture of the soundscape of Ireland today. We have, haven't we? We've journeyed from Dublin to Galway and even crossed the border to explore Northern Ireland. But before we wrap things up, there's one more stop I'd like to make the world of film and television. Ah, yes, the silver screen. Because as someone who's really into accents, I'm curious about how Irish accents are portrayed in movies and TV shows. Uh. Are there any portrayals that make you cringe or ones that you think really nail the authenticity? Oh, there are definitely some that make me cringe. It seems like Hollywood often uses this one-size-fits-all Irish accent for any character from Ireland, regardless of where they're actually supposed to be from. Right, like they've taken all these charming quirks of different Irish accents, mashed them together, and then turned the volume way up. Exactly. It becomes a caricature. Right. It's that super exaggerated, almost whimsical stage Irish accent you hear in some movies. It's a shame because it misses the real diversity of how people speak. Yeah, and I think it kind of undermines Irish culture as a whole. How so? It's like reducing a full orchestra to a single instrument. Each accent has its own melody, its own rhythm, its own history. To flatten it all into one generic sound just doesn't do it justice. It'd be like saying everyone in America sounds like a cowboy from an old Western movie. Uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> We all know that's not true. So why do some filmmakers make this mistake with Irish accents? Is it just laziness? I think it's probably a combination of things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might be a lack of awareness or research. But there's also the factor of audience expectation. You mean like viewers might be so used to hearing that stereotypical stage Irish accent that they just expect it even if it's not accurate? Exactly. It's tough to break away from those ingrained stereotypes. Yeah, that makes sense. But are there any signs of progress? Are filmmakers getting better at portraying Irish accents authentically? I do think things are getting better. There are more and more filmmakers and actors who are putting in the effort to get it right. Oh, that's good to hear. How are they doing that? Well, they're doing their research, working with dialect coaches, and really trying to capture the nuances of each region. That's encouraging to hear, because I imagine there's a responsibility to represent Irish culture respectfully and accurately. Absolutely. And when it's done well, it adds so much to a film or TV show. Agreed. You know, I'm realizing that this conversation has gone beyond just accents. In what way? It's been a look into the culture, the history, the very heart of Ireland. I think you're right. Language is really a window into the human experience. And exploring accents with all their differences lets us connect with people and places on a deeper level. It's like we've been on a sound adventure across Ireland, hearing echoes of ancient languages, feeling the rhythm of different regions, and sharing a laugh over slang. I like that. It's been great to have you here to guide us. It's been my pleasure. And on that note, I think it's time for us to say slan to our listeners, but not before leaving them with something to think about. Sounds good. So remember that Love Ireland newsletter we talked about at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Well, it encourages people to really engage with the locals and immerse themselves in the culture. Right. So I want you to think about this. How might your experience of Ireland change depending on the specific accent you come across? Interesting question. Would you be drawn to certain areas based on how people talk? Could exploring those unique soundscapes lead you to hidden gems and adventures you wouldn't have found otherwise? Something to think about as you plan your own Irish adventure. It is something to think about. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of Irish accents. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep listening. Slaint. Slaint. It's got this really lyrical quality that a lot of people find charming. So if Dublin is like a lively jig and Cork is a spirited reel, then Galway is more of a gentle ballad. Yeah, I like that. And what's really cool about the Galway accent is that it's one of the accents where you can really hear the influence of Irish Gaelic. Oh, wow. So it's like a living link to Ireland's linguistic past. Exactly. You might even hear subtle differences in like sentence structure or word order that come from Irish Gaelic and certain vowel sounds, especially the ones that are unique to Irish Gaelic, are more likely to be preserved in the Galway accent compared to other regions. It's amazing to me how each region has its own little microculture of sound. It really is. Shaped by geography history and this incredible blend of languages over time. Got it. And to fully appreciate that diversity, we need to make one more stop in Northern Ireland. Okay, across the border. Because just over there, you'll find a whole new world of accents. All right, Northern Ireland, I'm ready. What sets the accents there apart from what we've heard so far in Dublin, Cork, and Galway? Well, you see, Irish accents are this blend of influences, as we've been talking about. But in Northern Ireland, one influence rises to the top, 
Scots English. Scots English, as in from Scotland. That's right. Centuries of interaction and migration between Northern Ireland and Scotland have left a pretty noticeable mark on how people speak there. So in a way, Northern Irish accents are kind of like a bridge between Irish and Scottish speech patterns. Exactly. And that means you're going to encounter some fascinating differences. The vowel sounds, for instance, often have a different quality. And you might hear a stronger emphasis on certain syllables. It really is like each accent is adding its own verse to this complex and beautiful song. I like that analogy. Oh. And to add even more depth to our sonic choir, we need to talk about something we touched on earlier, slang. Oh, yes, slang. Give me all the colorful expressions and local phrases. I want to sound like a local when I'm ordering my pint of Guinness. I can definitely help you out with that. Let's start with a word you'll hear all over Ireland, but especially in those lively pub conversations, cray. Crick. Okay, how do you even pronounce that? It looks kind of intimidating. Don't worry, it's not as hard as it looks. It rhymes with crack, and it basically means fun enjoyment, good times, you know. So if someone asks, what's the crack? They're essentially asking what's going on or are you having a good time? Exactly. And if you're having a real blast, you can say, the crack is mighty. The crack is mighty. I love it. Okay, that one's going straight into my vocabulary. It's like a linguistic cheer for good vibes. Mm -hmm. What other gems can you share? Here's another one you'll hear a lot. Grand. Now, this one is super versatile. It can mean, okay, fine, great, even very good. It all depends on the context. So if someone asks how you're doing, you could just reply, grand. And you'd be covered. Exactly. And if you want to emphasize how great you're feeling, you could say, I'm grand altogether. Grand altogether. Another winner. That one's going on the list, too. It's like a linguistic Swiss army knife. Yeah. One word can convey so many meanings. It really is. Yeah. And that's what makes Irish slang so delightful. I'm so ready to experience all this firsthand. Now, you mentioned before that sometimes people worry about understanding Irish accents. Right. Do you have any advice for our listeners who might be feeling a bit apprehensive about that potential language barrier? It's understandable to feel a little nervous, especially if you're not used to hearing different accents. But honestly, I think the fear is often a bit exaggerated. So there's no need to pack a translator device or rely solely on hand gestures? No, not at all. The key is to just approach it with an open mind and be willing to listen. Remember, communication is a two-way street. Don't be afraid to ask people to repeat themselves if you didn't catch something. And most importantly, embrace those moments of potential misunderstanding with a sense of humor. Yeah, it's like those moments could become your funniest travel stories. Exactly. And you'll find that most Irish people are more than happy to help you navigate the nuances of their language. They might even enjoy sharing some local slang or explaining the origin of a particular phrase. That makes me feel better. It's like instead of being a barrier, the language becomes a way to connect with the people and the culture. Exactly. And those connections are what truly make a travel experience special. Couldn't agree more. I think we've painted a pretty vivid picture of what the soundscape of Ireland is like. I think so. We've gone from the bustling streets of Dublin to the melodic shores of Galway, and we even ventured into Northern Ireland to explore the unique mix of influences there. We did cover a lot of ground. But before we wrap up our exploration of Irish accents, there's one more stop. I want to make the world of film and television. Ah, yes, the silver screen. Because you know you're someone who's really into accents. I am. So I'm curious what you think about how Irish accents are portrayed in movies and TV shows. Are there any that make you cringe? And are there any that you think really capture the authenticity? Oh, yeah. There are definitely some portrayals that make me cringe. Yeah. You know, it's like sometimes Hollywood has this one-size-fits-all Irish accent that they use for any character who's supposed to be from Ireland. Right. It doesn't matter if the character is from Dublin, Cork, or some tiny village in County Kerry. They all end up sounding the same. It's like they've taken all the charming quirks of Irish accents and just blended them together and then amplified everything to the point where it becomes this caricature. It's that overly exaggerated stage Irish accent that you hear in some films. Exactly. Yeah. And it's such a shame because it completely misses the mark on the real diversity and nuance of how people actually speak in Ireland. It really does. And it kind of feels like it's reducing a whole orchestra to a single instrument. That's a great way to put it. You know, each accent has its own unique melody, its own rhythm, its own history. Right. To just flatten them all into one generic sound doesn't do justice to the beauty of Irish accents. I agree. It's like saying everyone in America sounds like a cowboy from those old Western movies. Exactly. So why do you think some filmmakers fall into this trap with Irish accents? Is it just laziness? I honestly think it's a combination of things. Sometimes it might be a lack of awareness or research. 
Maybe they just haven't had the chance to really experience the different sounds of Ireland firsthand. Yeah, that makes sense. But there's also this element of audience expectation. You know, some viewers might be so accustomed to hearing that stereotypical stage Irish accent that they've come to expect it, even if it's not accurate. It's like those stereotypes, even if they're not accurate, can become so ingrained in our minds that it's hard to break free from them. That's true. But the good news is I do think we're starting to see some progress. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, there are definitely more and more filmmakers and actors who are making an effort to portray Irish accents authentically. How so? Well, they're doing their research, they're working with dialect coaches, and they're really trying to capture those subtle nuances that make each region's accent unique. I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. Because beyond just getting the accent right, it seems like there's a responsibility to represent Irish culture with respect and accuracy. Absolutely. And I think when it's done well, it can add so much depth and authenticity to a film or TV show. Yeah. It's not just about mimicking the sounds. It's about conveying the character, the history, the heart of a place through language. This has been such a fascinating conversation. It has been fun. You know, it's more than just a deep dive into Irish accents. It feels like we've been on a journey into the culture, the history, the very soul of Ireland. I agree. Language is a powerful tool for connection and exploration. It's like we've been on a sonic adventure across the Emerald Isle, hearing echoes of ancient languages, feeling the rhythm of different regions, and chuckling over the playful twists of slang. It's been a joy to share this journey with you, and I hope it's inspired everyone listening to explore the world of accents a little further. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, on that note, it's time for us to say slan to our listeners. But not before. You're right. Not before leaving them with one final thought to ponder. Remember that Love Ireland newsletter we talked about at the beginning? The one packed with tips. That's the one. Well, it really encourages visitors to engage with the locals and immerse themselves in the culture. So think about this. How might your experience of Ireland change depending on the accent you encounter? That's a really interesting question. Would you be drawn to certain areas based on how people speak? Could exploring those unique soundscapes lead you to discover hidden gems and adventures you might have otherwise missed? It's something to think about as you plan your own trip to Ireland. I like it. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of Irish accents. Until mm -hmm. next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep listening. Slante! Slante!